our past. Eid Mubarak, Eid Shema Mubarak. Kulluam wa antum bekher. Eid al Fitr is a joyous day of celebrations for us all, an occasion that Muslims worldwide celebrate as one ummah. It marks the completion of the auspicious month of Ramadan, in which the Quran al Sharif was revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam a month during which we all strive to be more pious generous and compassionate in all aspects of our lives of the many ways and languages in which we gregariously greet each other across cultures and continents and traditions perhaps the most befitting in these challenging times when most of us can't physically congregate with our near and dear ones, share hugs and gifts with them, and enjoy a festive meal together is the greeting that our Arabic-speaking brothers and sisters exchange. Kulluwa wa antum bekher. May you be well with each passing year. This sense of hope, of aspiration, of building a better and brighter future is a hallmark of our tradition. Mulana Hazrima reminded us of this in his recent message when he said, and I quote, As we focus now on overcoming the present challenges, the Jamaat and all my institutions should plan to build for the future from a position of strength and wisdom. End of quote. In our centuries-long history, we find several examples of Jamaats under the direction of the Imam of the time emerging from their most vulnerable moments to a position of strength and wisdom. So how might we commemorate this special occasion while remaining safe and well in our own homes? As in so much of life, sometimes the answers to the questions of today can be explored with the knowledge of the past. And so let's use the opportunity to tap into the treasure trove of our rich history. In particular, let's explore how Eid al-Fitr was celebrated in Fatimid times. As we go along, I will refer to some books which those of you who wish to learn more about this period of history can read at your leisure. Our story today begins over a thousand years ago. The Fatimids are the only Muslim dynasty to be named after Hazrat Fatima al Sahra, alayha salam, the cherished daughter of Prophet Muhammad. The Fatimid period of our history began with the declaration of our 11th Imam al Mahdi as the first Fatimid Imam Caliph in the Congregational Mosque of Kairawan in present day Tunisia on 5th January 910. This was a momentous occasion. The Ismaili Imam's public proclamation in the Friday Khutbah or Sermon symbolized that he was claiming to be the rightful Amir al muminin the commander of the believers, who took on the responsibility of being caliph over the entire Muslim world. In his Iftitah al-Dawa wa Iftitah al-Dawla, commencement of the mission and founding of the state, Qadi an -Nu'man, the pioneering Ismaili scholar Dai of the time, gives us a first-hand account of these foundational developments. It records the decree that was announced in the mosque at Kairawan and read out across all mosques in nearby towns, proclaiming the status of the Fatimid Imam Caliphs as descendants of the Prophet, his Ahl al -Bayt. And I quote, God, may his praise be exalted and his name sanctified, fulfilled his promise to his messenger. May God bless him and his family by restoring the legacy of the Prophet and the keys of the Imamate to the family of his Prophet. He honored religion and the believers, saving them from disaster in every situation with the advent of the servant of God, Abu Muhammad, al-Imam al-Mahdi Billah, commander of the believers. 
May your adherence to the rope of obedience to him and the bond of loyalty to him become strong. For indeed, no bond connects God and his servants except through their love for the family of the Prophet. May God bless him and grant him salvation. God, exalted be his mention, has said, Say, no reward do I ask of you for this, except the love of those near of kin. End of quote. Over the next two and a half centuries, the Fatimids became a major Shi'i Mediterranean empire, stretching from the Atlantic shores of North Africa across the southern Mediterranean and the Red Sea, including Mecca and Medina. During this period, our Imams built three capital cities, Al Mahdiya and Al Mansuriya in present day Tunisia, and Al Kahira Al Muizia which we know as Cairo today. Among the many distinctive features that historians have noted about these cities was the flair with which several religious, cultural, and agricultural occasions were celebrated annually, from the festive opening of the canal, marking the inundation of the Nile and the start of the Egyptian planting season, to the processional celebrations of the two Eids. Many of our Imams were renowned for their knowledge as well as their poetic and oratorial skills. Many historians have recorded their speeches and khutbahs in their writings. Among these is a khutbah by a 13th Imam, Al-Mansur, which he delivered on Eid al-Fitr on 25th April 947. At the time, he was leading a Fatimid army in the mountains of Kiana in present-day Algeria in pursuit of Abu Yazid who had posed the greatest challenge to Fatimid survival in North Africa. This threat was so significant that at one time the Fatimid Empire was reduced to the boundaries of the city of al Mahdiya. In his khutbah, the Imam said, and I quote, Truly, this is a day God made for you as a festival and ceremony in which fasting comes to an end. So make your souls answerable. May God have mercy on you. He who speaks of good, let him praise good and let him increase in it. He who speaks of shortcomings, let him repent. Verily, God the exalted says in the Quran that he accepts repentance from his servants and forgives sins and he knows what you do." End of quote. Here Imam al-Mansur reminds people that even during periods of crisis in our lives, it is important to reflect on one's spiritual and material life, on the responsibility of one's actions and on seeking forgiveness. From this lowest ebb of fortunes, the Fatimids went on to secure momentous victories across North Africa, with Egypt marking the pinnacle of their success. The sources provide a fascinating account of the detailed preparations that led to the Fatimid general, Jawhar Asikili, leading his troops across a 1300 mile march from Tunisia to Egypt. They also record the positive reception of the Fatimid arrival by the Egyptian notables and provide a detailed account of the founding of Cairo in May 969. They relate that on the very evening that Jauhar arrived at the chosen site where the new Fatimid capital was to be built, he laid the foundation of two buildings, the Imam's palace and the Ashar mosque. These two spaces became the centerpiece of Fatimid celebrations in Egypt over the next two centuries. When our 14th Imam arrived with his family and entourage from North Africa to Cairo, the city erupted into festivities. The sources provide a vivid portrayal of the Imam's first celebration of Eid al-Fitr in the capital city named after him. And I quote, 
On the day of Eid al-Fitr, Imam al-Mu'ez rode out for the Eid prayer to the Musalla, the place for congregational Eid prayer of Cairo that Jawhar had built. He arrived in regal attire with his banners and litters. He led the complete long Eid prayer. Thereafter, he remained bowed and in prostration for a long time. In every bow and prostration, I, Ibn Zulak, recited the tasbih after him more than 30 times. Al-Qadi al-Nu'man relate, relate the takbir after him. This was the prayer of his forefather, Ali bin Abi Talib. When he had completed the prayer, he delivered the khutbah with the banners hoisted in front of him. He delivered it with such eloquence that it brought tears to people's eyes. He then left with his troops and was followed by his four sons, mounted on horses and in regal attire. In front of him were two elephants. When he reached the palace, he invited people to dine with him. End of quote. The sources tell us that guests wearing ceremonial robes that had been gifted by the Imam to them were invited to partake at the palace banquet. They were also given special sweetmeats that were prepared for the occasion as tabarruk, as baraka and blessing from the Imam's house to share with their family and friends. The distribution of alms among the poor and needy was also an integral part of the Eid celebrations. Our 15th Imam, Al-Aziz, built a dedicated warehouse of provisions known as Dar al-Fitra, where charitable contributions were collected and distributed on all festive occasions, as well as in times of adversity. Imam al-Aziz also had benches constructed along the way from the palace to the musalla, where Ismaili sat and recited Allahu Akbar, such that there was a continuous recitation from the palace to the musalla, providing a ritual connectivity to the processional route. While some additions and embellishments were made to Fatimid ceremonials in subsequent times, by and large, this remained the prototype of Fatimid celebrations in Egypt. Having had the blessing of experiencing many celebrations related to the jubilees of our beloved Maulana Hazar Imam, we may well find resonance of some of these festivities from the Fatimid age to our times as we celebrate Eid with our family, be it virtually or physically. Let us take a few moments to recall the happiness of those special times in our lives, to reflect on our spiritual and material well-being, and to offer our sincere shukrana to our beloved Mulana Hazar Imam for his continuing blessings, his guidance, and his wisdom. I hope you have enjoyed journeying into the past with me and that it will spark in you a curiosity to learn much more about our rich and pluralistic heritage. I wish you, your loved ones, and all our sisters and brothers around the world a happy, healthy, and a peaceful Eid. Eid Mubarak, eid Shuma Mubarak, Kullu Am, Wa Antum, Thank you, and Ya Ali Madad.